Hello everyone. My name is Liz Crowther and it is my privilege to pay the last and perhaps the most important tribute of this anniversary program. For this is the tribute to the tens of thousands of unsung heroes and heroines who have worked for the UN in the last 75 years in far-flung places, often in considerable discomfort and often, as we've heard, at great personal risk. Because most of the people that we've talked about so far have been men, this tribute is going to be all about women. Not because the male UN servants are unimportant, no, but because us women hold up half the sky, right? And in fact, the UN in its first 75 years has given great practical thought leadership to gender equity in its hiring policies, in its sharing of leadership roles, and in all its policy statements and recommendations. These are not women that you will ever have heard of. You wouldn't recognize them on the street, but these women are in the business of saving lives and defending rights, just as much as the great heroes that we've heard about. Women like Flora Macula, one of the 17,000 staff members of the UN High Commission for Refugees, set up to care for the world's 79.5 million refugees. Flora was born a refugee during the Balkan Wars. She likens being a refugee to being a tree forcefully uprooted and replanted on barren soil. And she sees her job as enriching the soil and focusing on the recovery of the trees. She says, after two decades in this sector, I still have the fire in me to work tirelessly in emergency situations such as this Rohingya crisis. Though I am now working for refugees, I will always remember what it felt like to be one. All humans carry their history with them. I know I do. Or Reka Akta, a driver for the UN's World Food Programme, which feeds 100 million people a year, mostly in countries at war. Reka was married at 13. Her husband died in a road accident in Saudi Arabia while she was pregnant with her second son. And the stigma attached to being a widow can be devastating. So Reka immediately started looking for work. She sold off her jewelry and her bed to pay to be trained as a UN driver. And she was good at it and was soon offered a contract. She says, for the past 18 years, I have traveled around Bangladesh and trained other female drivers. It has given me immense satisfaction and pride to have built a dignified, self-made life for my children and myself. But there are costs. A lot of the time my work keeps me far away from my children. However, the struggles I've encountered makes me feel connected to the struggles of the hungry and all the other people that we work for. Anika Tanjim Konok works as an education officer for UNICEF. She says, I share a common goal with all humanitarians. We all work towards bringing a positive change for the communities we serve and the hope for a better future. When I saw Rohingya children in need of support, I thought about my two little sisters and the role I played in their upbringing. I realized that Rohingya children are no different to children anywhere else in the world. They want to play and get into mischief, they want to learn, and they want to have the same opportunities as everyone else. Happiness can be gained from so many different places, but happiness that comes from putting smiles on the faces of Rohingya children is something beyond imagination and something worth living for. Now, meet Gloria Kiridi from Eldoret in Kenya, who works on rolling out the World Food Programme's digital platform, Scope. Her smile says it all. I've always had a passion for technology, she says. The excitement in the faces of the people when they first use their scope cards and start accessing food in stores makes me feel happy and fuels my energy to do more. I digitalize systems for humanitarian assistance, a field where there are only a few women. However, I have witnessed 
how we can change lives through technology. So I hope that more women will join me in this dual field of technology and humanitarian relief. I could go on. I could talk about the peacekeepers, the 3,928 individuals who have lost their lives in the service of the UN. But you can't drive forward looking in a rear view mirror. And we must look forward to face the challenges that we face in the present and in the future. But think about those heroes and heroines we've looked at. They were your age once. Might you be one of the future UN heroes or heroines of the next 75 years? You could be. Think about it. 